What's going on YouTube, I'm Slick, that's Slick Jackson, and if you're looking for the coolest, grooviest content on the site, you come to the right place. Despite what many may say, I, Slick Groovy Jackson, believe in the American dream. I believe that any man, woman, and yes, maybe even child, can make a name for themselves in this world, and all it'll take is some hard work, elbow grease, a little risk taken, and exceptional charisma. That being said, I hate rich people. They're annoying, selfish, and the worst thing is, they run the entire country. Yep, I'm getting bossed around by millionaires over in Washington, DC. People who know nothing about the plot of the working man. Celebrities all over trying to tell me what to think. Whatever happened to a government by the people for the people. But friends, that's why you got me. I'm the loud voice of the little man, sticking it to the fat cats one video at a time on a heavily corporatized website that could realistically kick me off at their convenience. Man, I really gotta thank these things through, don't I? But still, you get what I'm saying? Politicians, rich people, celebrities, they're all out of touch losers who know nothing about the day in the life of us hard-working folks, people like you and me. So you know what I think? I think it's time I give them a piece of my mind. I got right here three stories about rich people being obnoxious blockheads, and I'm gonna laugh at all of them. Back when companies were locking down because of COVID-19, everyone had to work from home. Well, the office workers did. Those of us who had to do the real work, you know, the heavy lifting, still had to bust ass in the warehouses. But now, COVID's just about done, and when I say done, I mean no longer politically advantageous to the folks in Congress. So now all the office drones are coming back into their workstations. There was this office up in Toronto called Oxford Properties. They just really wanted to welcome back their employees. In the lobby of an office building in Toronto, I guess to make sure that employees are flooded with resentment the instant they walk into the door. And we have pictures of these signs right here. Miss your sweatpants yet? Good lord man, it's like they're saying, yeah, hope you enjoyed working from the comfort of your own home because we own you now. Like seriously, what is this trying to accomplish? Like, it's not even just lighthearted, it just sounds like you're berating your employees. Seriously, we missed you. Yeah, right, I'm sure you did. Bet your dog's missing you. Yeah, you know, what a great way to welcome back your employees. Make fun of them because their dog can't see them no more. I'm speechless. Like, I get what they're trying to do. But just barely, because these just sound like it sounds like you're bullying your own employees. Like seriously, imagine being an employee working here, right? You got to work from the comfort of your own home. You had that luxury, and now you're back to the daily grind, waking up early to get to your commute, riding that bus, shuffling your feet into your office. Lo and behold, your boss just put up a sign that may as well just be laughing at you. So this went somewhat viral, and so the company responded. When reached for a statement, Oxford Properties admitted their mistake and revealed that the photos were from last week and that the signage had already been removed. Unfortunately, in an attempt to be lighthearted, the signage came off as uncaring, which was never our intention. The signage clearly missed the mark and was removed last week as a result, the media team at Oxford Communications told Blog T.O. The campaign should not have made it into production and we sincerely apologize to any customers, colleagues, and members of the public that were offended. Yeah, now they realize it. Like what, it took you that long to figure out that these signs come off as incredibly patronizing? Isn't it your job to be good with people so they can keep their workers working and their customers happy? If I were your boss, you'd be fired in an instant, because it's obvious you know jack diddly about socializing like were you a social outcast growing up didn't get to hang around people not many friends ah despair man and then we have mr george takai i don't know what this guy's all about his twitter feed is just full of left-leaning political garbage and let me be clear here i don't mind political difference but this guy's entire feed is just politics this and politics that it's like good lord dude don't you have anything better to do than post and retweet politics all day like yeah politics are a normal part of life but to make it a centerpiece to yourself as a person? That's just sad. Then again, he probably has some sort of PR team running the account. I mean, you know how these celebrities roll. In any case, he made this tweet about the Ukrainian situation, specifically how it affected gas prices. And if you ever needed proof that rich people are just all sorts of disconnected from reality, well, here you have it. Americans, we can endure higher prices for food and gas if it means putting the screws to Putin. Consider it a patriotic donation in the fight for freedom over tyranny. Okay, first of all, who's we? I mean, I know damn well you ain't talking to me, because you and I ain't nothing alike. You're an actor who starred in one of the biggest media franchises of all time. I work at a warehouse. You make millions. I have to sneak breadsticks into my backpack whenever I go to Olive Garden. That's the thing, dude. Most of us here in these United States, as a matter of fact, 
can't endure these prices. See, unlike you who has millions of dollars, either in liquid form or in the form of investments, businesses, or whatnot, most of us have to do the stand cold budgeting. And see, we gotta do it carefully, otherwise we're in for a world of hurt. And I mean, besides, aren't donations typically, you know, I don't know, consensual? When I give my money to the church, I do it because I want to, but I certainly don't want to pay more for gas to help out for a war that don't involve me none. Granted, I don't have to pay for gas, but I mean, come on, with the infrastructure this country's got, I pretty much have to. But you know what, George? If you believe in your message so much, if you really want to stick it to Putin, why don't you send old Slicky some cash? Help him get by. I could use a few grand for, you know, gas, food, rent, some Warhammer models, you know, just the bare necessities. This, my friends, is war propaganda, plain and simple. Celebrities being used to push some sort of agenda. It's sickening, it truly is. Another pathetic attempt by an out-of-touch celebrity to try and relate to your average Joe. It doesn't work, man. It never works. Lastly, we got this Kim Kardashian interview from Variety. This was the line that stood out to everyone. I have the best advice for women in business. Get your f***ing ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. You That's have to, so true. You have to and you know what she said? It is true, for the most part. It's about drive, it's about power. We stay hungry, we devour. You put in the work, you put in the hours, and take what's ours. But then again, it's pretty rich hearing this from Kim, of all people. I don't know much about Miss Kardashian. Believe it or not, I have better things to do than pay attention to what some billionaire asshole is doing from day to day. If you want an example, I'll make videos on YouTube that might get 200 views, you know, if I'm lucky. But the way I've heard her described to me is she pretty much gets paid to exist. I know she's got a TV show that's pretty much, oh wow, look at this celebrity who's living, I guess. She might put on clothes to model for some magazine cover. Uh, just really back-breaking work there, ain't it? If only I had the money to replace the shell of my body, which we call the skin, with plastic. You know, if only I could get myself some plastic surgery, you'd be seeing me on posters, movies, commercials all over the world. But alas, I am too lazy to get your f***ing ass up and work. I also know that this woman sold out to promote some random crypto coins that probably rug pulled at some point. I don't care enough to check. Again, really back-breaking work. Here I am, busting ass, pushing pallets, stacking boxes. But Kim Kardashian's out here doing the real work. Or, you know, pushing crypto to her gullible fans. Honestly, people like these make me hope for some sort of apocalypse. Nuclear war, zombies, in the works, you know. You and I, we've got a fighting chance, but people like Kim, they become so accustomed to their way of life, their wealth and privilege. If that ever got taken away from them, well, for one, it would be funny just to see them get knocked down a peg. And secondly, I don't think they'd last for two weeks, two days two seconds. Probably couldn't even use a can opener. Well, then again, celebrities are probably too good to get canned food. Ugh, yeah, these rich people are out of touch. As for me, I'm out of time, so that's all I've got for this shtick. You guys do old Jackie a favor and keep it groovy. Thank you. Thank you very much.